So in today's session, so we are going to discuss about the hydrocarbon formation in CA engine exhaust. Followed by that, we are going to discuss about the formation of particulate matter and all other emissions we are going to discuss. Okay, so in today's lecture, our main focus is about formation of particulate matter because this hydrocarbon formation in CA engine is almost similar to SI engine. Right, whatever topics that we have discussed for SA engine, same thing is applicable for CA engine also. So we know very well that major emissions from the engines are, there are three major emissions, one is unburned hydrocarbon, then oxides of carbon, that is especially carbon monoxide, because carbon dioxide, anyhow we cannot prevent, because when we have combustion, definitely carbon dioxide will be there. If the combustion is complete, then carbon dioxide is going to come. But if the combustion is not complete, if it is incomplete combustion, then carbon monoxide is going to be formed. And this carbon monoxide is very harmful, which is a poisonous gas. And the other emission, other major emission is NOx. NOx is because of combustion temperature. If you are going to have higher combustion temperature, then oxides of nitrogen is going to be formed. So these are the major emissions for both SA engine as well as for CA engine. If it is a CA engine, then we will be having two more emissions. One is particulate matter. Right? Particulate matter is also called as soot, but there is a slight difference between soot and particulate matter. So that we will discuss now. And we have this oxides of sulfur. Okay. So major uh, emissions are this and then particulate matter. So now let us start with the uh, hydrocarbon formation in uh, CA engine. Right? This we didn't complete in the last lecture. So in general, for the CA engine, we are going to operate at a lean condition. Correct? Under lean burn only, we are going to operate with uh, less than stoichiometric uh, uh, the uh, fuel requirement we are going to operate under lean condition. That means more amount of oxygen is going to be there, right? So if uh, the amount of oxygen present for combustion is going to be higher, then automatically the hydrocarbon emission is going to come down. So this we have discussed already in, in the previous lecture, correct? When you compare with the SI engine and CA engine, in the case of CA engine, the amount of hydrocarbon emission emitted is only one third of that of the uh, SI engine. The reason is because of the lean burn uh, combustion, right? And the mechanisms of hydrocarbon formation, which we have discussed for SA engine, all those which we have discussed for SA engine, all those mechanisms are applicable for CA engine also. Like some of the uh, hydrocarbon uh, formation mechanisms, like leakage over exhaust valve and absorptions on the wall and the presence of the lube oil film uh, in the cylinder wall and the flow of the air fuel mixture into the crevice volume, all these concepts are applicable for CA engine also, right? Whatever concept we have discussed with SA engine, all those concepts are applicable for CA engine also, right? So same thing we can write, right? Or we can say. Apart from this, in the case of CA engine, we are going to have suit formation, right? See, the main difference between the, the main difference in combustion for SA engine and CA engine is that in the case of SA engine, we are going to have pre-mixed air fuel, right? Air and fuel are going to be mixed before it enters into the engine cylinder, right? So that we call it as homogeneous combustion because both air and fuel are mixed already. So that pre-mixed air fuel is going to enter into the engine combustion, in, enter into the engine cylinder for combustion, right? In the case of uh, SA engine. Whereas in the case of CA engine, only air enters. Then subsequently for combustion, we are going to spray or we are going to introduce the diesel fuel, right? So since these two are entering into the engine cylinder uh, at, uh, with a small delay, this we call it as a heterogeneous mixture because air is available inside the engine cylinder. Then later we are going to uh, spray the uh, diesel, right? So when we spray the diesel, already the uh, air that is compressed inside the engine cylinder is at a autoignition temperature of the diesel, right? At, uh, at a higher pressure and higher temperature. So temperature is higher. As soon as we spray, it is going to undergo combustion. When it is going to undergo combustion, for combustion to occur, the air and fuel should mix. So the mixing phenomenon and the combustion both are going to occur parallelly. 
whereas in the case of si engine mixing happens separately once mixing is complete then it enters into the engine cylinder for combustion whereas in the case of ca engine we are going to have heterogeneous mixture heterogeneous when i say fuel is separate and air is separate right and during combustion only it is going to mix right and since we are going to have this heterogeneous mixture the flammable limit for ca engine for diesel right it is not too lengthy right the flammable limit is small that means like if you are going to have lean mixture too lean mixture right normal operation we are going to have lean mixture and if you are going to have too lean mixture then you cannot ensure combustion right your flame quenching may happen similarly if the uh, if the uh, air fuel mixture is too rich right if the air fuel mixture is too rich then also flame quenching may happen that means complete combustion will not happen right because the main reason for this the flame quenching in the case of ca engine is that it is heterogeneous fuel is separate air is separate right during combustion it undergoes the mixing okay so when compared to the gasoline diesel is having higher uh, molecular weight and already we have also told you that for lube oil also the molecular weight is more compared to gasoline right so diesel is also having higher molecular weight so diesel is also a higher molecular weight fuel so because of which mixing is difficult because we are going to have heterogeneous uh, combustion this results in formation of soot soot is nothing but carbon deposit right which will be in solid state okay so during this combustion process or during the combustion in ca engine soot is going to be formed that is solid particle of carbon solid uh, carbon particles are going to be formed and to this solid uh, carbon particle other hydrocarbon compounds they are also going to stick to it right so when it stick to it then we call it as a particulate matter particulate matter is nothing but soot plus the the uh, hydrocarbon other uh, constituents in the uh, combustion when they stick to the soot particle that we call it as particulate matter okay so most of the soot particles so you, in, during combustion there will be lot of more amount of soot particles are going to be formed whereas uh, these uh, soot particles that are being formed they will undergo oxidation so part of the soot particle formed is going to undergo oxidation and only part of the soot particle without undergoing oxidation or without undergoing combustion it is going to come out through the exhaust okay so that is what is harmful and that we we call it as an uh, harmful emission from the ca engine okay so now let us come to this uh, formation of particulate matter in detail right especially in ca engine even in the case of si engine also you can have but compared to si engine ca engine it is going to be more in the case of si engine we are using lube oil for lubrication this lube oil is also a hydrocarbon which is also flammable it will also undergo combustion but compared to gasoline in the case of si engine i'm telling in the case of si engine compared to gasoline the molecular weight of lube oil is higher so it will not combust easily like a gasoline fuel okay so there also you will have very little amount of uh, uh, the formation of uh, particulate matter that that is only because of the lube oil whereas in the case of diesel oil we are having lube oil and diesel oil both are of higher molecular weight so soot the formation of soot is higher in ca engine okay so we have basically for automotive application ca engine and si engine right but still majority of the people they prefer ca engine why why do we prefer ca engine yes more efficient but, yes it is more efficient why it is uh, efficient greater compression ratio correct so if we we go for ca engine because it works with higher compression ratio because of higher compression ratio from the air standard efficiency we know that it depends upon the compression ratio efficiency air standard efficiency depends upon the compression ratio for higher compression ratio the efficiency is going to be higher if the efficiency is higher then the fuel consumption is less right so that is why we go for uh, ca engine uh, we prefer a diesel engine because the cost of the fuel is less and the fuel consumption is less efficiency is higher correct and coming to the emission part 
from the CA engine, when you come to the emission part, so three major emissions are there. One is the unburned hydrocarbon, other one is the NOx formation, and the third one is the carbon monoxide. This uh, uh, carbon monoxide and um, unburned hydrocarbon, right? When we are going to operate under lean condition, then what will happen? Under lean condition, we are going to have more amount of oxygen. When more amount of oxygen is going to be there, then formation of CO is going to be less. Similarly, for hydrocarbon also, the uh, unburned hydrocarbon is going to be less because the more availability of oxygen is uh, available. So that will lead to proper combustion. So the amount of uh, unburned hydrocarbon that is present in the exhaust gas is going to be less. So you are, with respect to emission part, with respect to emission, unburned hydrocarbon in CA engine is less. So that is also a reason why do we select CA engine compared to SA engine, right? But remember, uh, the when when combustion takes place right there are two different types of combustion i have told you that there are two different types of combustion one we call it as heterogeneous combustion another one is homogeneous combustion what is homogeneous combustion where does it occur there are two different types of combustion one is homogeneous and heterogeneous right heterogeneous what is homogeneous if you are going to have pre-mixed air fuel right in the case of sa engine we are going to have pre-mixed air fuel so that combustion or that flame formed during combustion we call it as pre-mixed flame this is found in the conventional SA engine. But whereas in the case of uh, CA engine, CA engine it is, what type of combustion? Combustion in CA engine is heterogeneous or homogeneous? Heterogeneous. Yeah, heterogeneous. That means what? Mixing and combustion should occur parallelly. When I say mixing, the fuel has to diffuse into air, right? So this flame, which uh, is uh, the, the for combustion the in the case of uh, diesel engine or uh, ca engine the fuel has to diffuse into the air the compressed air and thereby it has to undergo combustion so the flame here it is called as diffusion flame right because it has to do two activity uh, one is the mixing and the combustion both has to undergo right so there are basically two different types of flame one we call it as a pre-mixed flame other one is diffusion flame right especially in the case of ca engine we are going to have diffusion flame because here it is heterogeneous combustion right during this heterogeneous combustion or diffusion combustion soot is formed during especially during the uh, diffusion flame or diffusion combustion right wherever we are going to have diffusion combustion the formation of soot the probability of formation of soot is higher so that is why we have this particulate matter or soot formation in the ca engine Right. So, what is soot? Soot is nothing but the solid carbon particle. Right. So, these are formed when we are going to have improper mixing. That means your diffusion combustion or heterogeneous combustion. And whenever we are going to have uh, the uh, rich uh, uh, fuel air mixture. Okay. When we are going to operate the engine with uh, under uh, rich uh, fuel air mixture condition the amount of oxygen available is going to be less. So this uh, suit formation is going to be there. So the suit is, let us say, in the case of uh, combustion inside a engine cylinder, we are going to use fuel. The fuel that we are going to use is either it is going to be gasoline or it is going to be diesel, right? Or let us say even if it is lube oil, right? So now these fuels are hydrocarbon fuels. They contain carbon and hydrogen atom. These are all hydrocarbon fuels. So this combustion process is nothing but an oxidation process. And it is exothermic chemical reaction, right? This is an oxidation process. That means we are going to supply oxygen for combustion. And at the end, our objective is to get the uh, heat energy from the combustion process, right? It is an exothermic reaction. So when the hydrocarbon present in the fuel is getting oxidized, when we supply oxygen for combustion, right? During this, uh, uh, this is the oxidizer, right? So when it undergoes oxidation, the products that are being formed after this uh, exothermic chemical reaction is CO2, then water vapor. This hydrogen reacts with oxygen and it will form water vapor. This carbon reacts with oxygen and it forms CO2, right? And in case if the combustion is not proper, then there will be uh, the formation of carbon monoxide also. Some amount of formation of carbon monoxide is going to be there. And certain amount of carbon may not get oxidized it will not react with the oxygen and the unreacted carbon 
it comes out as soot it comes out as soot it will be in solid form this carbon particle will be in solid form this is what we are referring it as soot particle so this soot particle is harmful when it is emitted into the atmosphere right now this in, in, in most of the cases they have found that this soot it contains eight parts of carbon and one part of hydrogen that means predominantly you are going to have only carbon um, carbon atom right so that is why we say that this is uh, soot particle is solid carbon particle right maximum you will find only carbon atom okay now sir uh, yes can pre combustion chamber be a solution to this like yes sure if you are going to have indirect combustion in the case of ca engine then this particulate matter can be avoided because you are going to have uh, partly this uh, your air fuel mixer is going to undergo mixing and then it enters into the main combustion chamber no so yes. we can go for indirect combustion okay. okay so this particulate matter see if you uh, see in the exhaust right uh, almost uh, 0.5 percent 0.2 to 0.5 percent of the fuel supplied for combustion it is going to come out in the form of particulate matter particulate matter is nothing but soot plus other hydrocarbon compounds when they attach to it when they get absorbed or adsorbed to the uh, soot particle together we call it as particulate matter okay so this uh, particulate matter uh, uh, it is found in the uh, engine exhaust because of the combustion of the lube oil also right Uh, in the case of uh, ca engine 70% of the particulate matter is because of the diesel and 20% is because of the lube oil okay and these particles it is going to be suspended in the exhaust gas right and it is going to come out like a dark smoke okay with an odor right with some smell okay so the maximum formation is going to be at higher load whenever you are going to operate the engine at higher load then we are going to supply more amount of fuel when more amount of fuel is going to be injected then uh, the your equivalence ratio is going to be higher right it is going to be more than 1 right phi equivalence ratio is going to be more than 1 under such conditions the formation of soot is higher right so soot particles are nothing but clusters of uh, around some 5000 uh, carbon uh, uh, atoms right uh, carbon spheres right Th- this each uh, carbon uh, particle that is emitted is in the uh, region of uh, nanometers right it is very small average size of the carbon particle emitted is in the uh, each uh, carbon particle is in the range of 15 to 30 nanometer this is average right it can vary from 9 to 90 nanometer but on an average it is 15 to 30 nanometer and this uh, this carbon particle that is being emitted to this we are going to have the uh, absorption of other hydrocarbon uh, uh, vapors uh, is is going to uh, it is going to condense on this solid and after coalescence this uh, this soot particle right or particulate matter they will join together right which we call as agglomeration right so uh, that the, in detail we are going to discuss about the phenomenon of the formation of the particulate matter right so the hydrocarbon and other organic compounds right so uh, once the soot particle is being formed soot particles are only carbon particle right when the soot particle is being formed then the other hydrocarbons that are present in the combustion during combustion that are being formed in the combustion and other organic compounds they condense and they will get adsorbed right uh, it is not absorption it is adsorbed it is going to be adsorbed on the surface of the soot particle together we call this as soluble organic fraction right so when you see this particulate matter this is what we call as a particulate matter particulate matter is combination of soot particle and other organic compounds right and other um, hydrocarbon compounds or organic compounds that we call it as a particulate matter so if you see the composition there are two things now one is the carbon particle other one is the other organic compounds right if you see the uh, in the case of particulate matter more than 50% we are going to have only carbon particle right or this uh, uh, your organic compound that is going to get condensed or adsorbed to the surface of the soot particle it is going to be something between 3 to 50% that means more than 50% uh, in most of the cases you will find only the carbon particle right in the case of particulate matter you will find more than 50% as uh, soot particles okay so particulate matter is nothing but the combination of soot particles and other compounds these other compounds are going to be in the liquid state let us say when we are going to spray the fuel in the atomized form right if it is not atomized properly then it may be in the liquid state right or 
when it condenses then when it gets adsorbed to the surface of the soot particle it may be in the solid state okay it may be in the solid phase so this uh, liquid or in solid phase it is going to get attached or adsorbed to the surface of the carbon particle right so more than 50% of the particulate matter is soot that is carbon particle only okay so the other constituents of the particulate matter when the particulate matters are going to come out from the engine exhaust if you analyze in detail the other constituents other than the carbon particle other than the solid carbon particle that is soot we have other constituents such as the unburned fuel or partially burned fuel that is going to be there right in the particulate matter and the uh, unburned or partially burned lube oil so its constituent is that is also going to be there in the particulate matter apart from that in the, in the when the engine is operating right when the piston is going to move inside the um, uh, cylinder right so during this process we are going to have wear right so uh, when the worn out metals right your uh, piston and uh, cylinder are metals right the worn out metals minute particles right so uh, these minute particles that is also going to be carried away along with the uh, products of the combustion so that is going to be present in the uh, exhaust gas right so this is also part of particulate matter so particulate matter contains unburned or partially burned fuel oil unburned or partially burned lube oil then the metal particles we become worn out metal particles from the due to the movement of the piston and cylinder that is also going to be there and in the fuel we will have small amount of sulfur also right so that fuel derive, uh, derived uh, sulfate that is also going to be there and also we are going to have bound water right when i say bound water water exists in two form one is unbound form other one is bound form when i say unbound form let us say you have water in a lake right so the top surface right so that is not bounded by anything okay whereas now let us say uh, a, a, a compound wall is there and uh, during rainy season uh, let us say there is a water stagnation in the ground so when there is water stagnation here by the wall what will happen the water level will rise inside the compound wall because of the capillary reaction when during capillary reaction the the water that is present inside the capillary that is completely bounded by other object when water is going to be completely bounded by other object when it is not exposed to the atmosphere right that water we call it as bound water so in the case of particulate matter the water vapor right the water vapor or the water uh, that is being formed during the combustion process if it, that is going to be completely covered by the carbon particle or the soot particle or other uh, compounds of the or, uh, other organic compounds right and inside that you are going to have water right uh, completely covered by some solid object so this is also present in the particulate matter right so this water is not in vapor form right so it gets condensed and it is being completely covered by the carbon particle or the other organic compounds so all this forms the particulate matter so particulate matter is nothing but the carbon particle that is soot then partially or unburned fuel partially or unburned lube oil then wear metals then fuel derived sulfate and bound water all these forms the particulate matter okay so now uh, we want to reduce the emission from the engine so we want to design an engine where we have the least emission okay so when you see now if let us say if it is the case of a ca engine you want to design a ca engine right so till now we have discussed about uh, the uh, in the case of uh, ca engine emission you are going to have unburned hydrocarbon we are going to have nox we are going to have uh, carbon monoxide then we are going to have particulate matter now we have come to the fourth emission right fourth emission now right so now in all these cases if you see this uh, hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide unburned hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide they follow the same trend right if you see the curve they both follow the same trend if you are going to move towards the lean direction then the amount of uh, presence of uh, uh, the hydrocarbon and uh, carbon monoxide in the exhaust gas is going to be less the, the if you see the trend of the nox that is completely different right you will have a bell shaped curve okay in the case of uh, nox you will have a bell shaped curve so the the emission nox and particulate matter they are completely in the different trend opposite trend both are having the opposite trend that means if you are going to design a ca engine to reduce nox then your particulate matter will be more 
in the exhaust you will find more amount of particulate matter now let us say if you want to design a ca engine to reduce the presence of particulate matter in the exhaust then you will find the presence of nox so you have to i have to identify a trade off whenever we are designing a ca engine we have to identify a trade off because the the formation of nox and particulate matter are for the, 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 it, the relationship with the combustion process is completely opposite right if you find more particulate matter nox will be less if you find uh, more nox then particulate matter will be less so we have to identify a trade off and we have to optimize the engine design to have minimum emission of both nox and particulate matter right coming to this particulate matter formation how does this particulate matter is being formed during combustion process right or for combustion for combustion what do you require you require fuel and air when we are going to have fuel fuel is going to be in which state the phase of the fuel in which state the fuel exist whether it can be gasoline or uh, uh, diesel let us say in the case of uh, ca engine we are going to have diesel so in the uh, fuel oil tank it is going to be in which state diesel will be in liquid state correct so for combustion this diesel fuel or diesel oil we are going to spray we are going to atomize when we atomize it will be in which form in vapor form so from liquid it is turning into vapor form right now combustion occurs watch carefully now right you are having fuel and it is atomized or sprayed into the engine cylinder where compressed air is present when we atomize the fuel will be in vapor form now air fuel mixture undergoes combustion when it undergoes combustion it has to undergo mixing and combustion both has to happen because this is not a pre mixed uh, combustion right this is a heterogeneous combustion so the fuel has to diffuse into the compressed air and it should mix and it should undergo combustion right so when it undergoes combustion the other constituents the organic compounds during the combustion process that are being formed they will stick to the solid suit right it will stick to the solid carbon particle and this this together we call it as uh, particulate matter and this is going to pass through the exhaust pipeline or through the tail pipe of the automotive automobile this is going to come out this particulate matter right this particulate matter part of the particulate matter the constituents of the part of the particulate matter hello the part of the particulate matter will go through the vapor phase on oxidation yes so the uh, part of the particulate matter it will undergo oxidation as it passes through the exhaust gases when it is allowed to pass through the exhaust gases the particulate matter constituents once again it will undergo oxidation and it will go to the vapor state right so the during combustion it is in vapor form and once it stick to the solid carbon particle then it will become uh, solid right particulate matter then as it passes through the exhaust gases some part of the constituents that are stick to the carbon particle or the soot particle that will undergo again oxidation so the remaining which has not undergone oxidation that will still remain and it will stick to the soot particle so this we call it as a particulate matter so the process involved in the formation of particulate matter are there are five processes right one we call it as pyrolysis followed by that we are going to have nucleation then we are going to have coalescence then surface growth and agglomeration right so these five pyrolysis nucleation coalescence surface growth and agglomeration all this lead to the formation of particulate matter initially what will happen pyrolysis is going to happen when i say pyrolysis pyrolysis is nothing but the thermal decomposition at elevated temperature when you have a fuel at a higher temperature inside the engine cylinder initially it will undergo thermal decomposition let us say this is the fuel right so initially it will undergo the fuel uh, that is your hydrocarbon fuel that is going to undergo pyrolysis pyrolysis is nothing but the thermal decomposition right thermal decomposition at a higher temperature right once that is being uh, once the pyrolysis is done then the carbon soot particles are formed right this carbon soot particles initially they are like a nucleus like this many soot particles you can find right so now later what is going to happen to this soot particle the other organic compounds they are going to get adsorbed this we call it as coalescence right so other organic compounds it is going to get adsorbed a layer by layer of this is going to get adsorbed 
and we are going to have surface growth right so uh, to the soot particle this other organic compounds when it is going to get absorbed we are going to have the surface growth or the coalescence is going to occur so like this this is very small tiny carbon particle now it has gained mass because of the adsorption of the other organic components its mass has increased its size has increased so we are having the higher mass right because of the adsorption now among this they will join together clusters of this uh, particulate matter will be formed which we call it as agglomeration followed by that we are going to have agglomeration this is an agglomeration because this is particulate matter this is particulate matter this is another particulate matter all this particulate matter they will join together so you will find cluster of this particulate matter which we call it as agglomeration so these are all agglomerates so this is going to come out in the exhaust okay so finally when this uh, agglomerates of the particulate matter when it passes through the exhaust pipe or the tail pipe of the automobile there also some of the uh, the uh, other constituents that are present in the particulate matter they will also undergo oxidation right when it undergoes oxidation the final product is going to be co2 co and water vapor okay you will not have complete oxidation of this agglomerate to the surface whatever some of the part of the constituent that are adsorbed at the surface that will undergo oxidation right so totally six process involved right when it enters into the atmosphere the fuel after undergoing combustion formation of soot when it enters into the uh, atmosphere six processes are involved among these six processes five are related to formation of particulate matter and the last process is in the tail pipe whatever oxidation that is happening right so that is the sixth process okay so this is how the particulate matter is being formed so if you see the stages of combustion which we have discussed for ca engine earlier right so this is the place from where the atomized fuel is sprayed right this is fuel part right this is fuel in liquid state so it is sprayed from the uh, your fuel injector right so it is injected from the uh, injector and this complete region is compressed air right so it is going to have interaction with the compressed air right so here this this is your uh, air fuel mixture right but remember here we are going to have more quantity of fuel than the stoichiometric uh, condition right so this we call it as even though we have air the amount of air available is here is less so this is rich mixture right so this is rich mixture and this gray color this is what we call it as a soot this is the place where the soot formation occurs carbon particles solid carbon particles are being formed this is less in amount right then what will happen as the as the uh, the uh, fuel diffuses into the compressed air as the mixing and combustion take place so what is going to happen is that the this is your initial soot formation then subsequently the in this region right so this is the oxidation right of the soot not the entire soot formed is not going to come out through the exhaust gas only part of the soot is going to come out through the along with the exhaust gas right some uh, remaining amount is going to undergo oxidation so this is the region where the soot is undergoing oxidation right so and this uh, green color refers to the nox here outer layer the whatever uh, nitrogen that is present in the air at a higher temperature Uh, this uh, diatomic nitrogen splits into monoatomic and monoatomic is reactive it reacts with the oxygen and it forms nox that is this green region okay so this is about the complete formation of your soot so here this is the place where the soot is initially formed then subsequently the soot that is being formed it is going to agglomerate right you are going to have nucleation then we are going to have coalescence after coalescence you are going to have this agglomeration and uh, part of the constituents uh, uh, here after agglomeration we are going to have the largest concentration of uh, the particulate matter right in this region okay this is about the various stages of soot formation in the case of ca engine right coming to the other emissions right see the other emissions are uh, one of the major emission other emission is uh, this uh, sox right the the fuel contains sulfur right so in the case of uh, petrol engine or the, uh, the petrol fuel like right? let us say unleaded petrol is what we are using these days 
this unleaded petrol uh, if you are going to use then you will find almost 150 to 550 ppm of sulfur present in the exhaust gas whereas if it is a diesel you will find more more amount of sox right almost 5500 ppm of sox is found in the uh, diesel engine exhaust right and uh, uh, in some places we use natural gas as the fuel right so this natural gas also contains uh, sulfur right the natural gas which contains sulfur is also called as a sore natural gas right because of uh, presence of uh, sulfur in the fuel when it undergoes oxidation the, the probability of formation of sox is higher the sox can be either so2 or so3 at higher temperature at very high temperature what will happen is that not only this uh, so2 and so3 are going to be formed this uh, hydrogen sulfide is also going to be formed h2s is also going to be formed right so when this uh, uh, hydrocarbon from the hydrocarbon when the uh, hydrogen uh, reacts with uh, oxygen we will get uh, h2o and the sulfur present in the uh, fuel reacts with oxygen then you will have the so2 or so3 right initially you will have so2 then further oxidation that will lead to so3 right and this uh, uh, socks that is being formed so2 and so3 if it reacts with the water vapor then that is uh, very hazardous very harmful that will lead to formation of sulfuric acid right h2so4 or h2so3 uh, because of this when this is being emitted to the atmosphere that will lead to acid rain right so the environmental impact of the emissions from the engine we have discussed already right that will lead to acid rain so the emission norms these days they restrict the presence of uh, the sulfur content in the fuel right it should be less than 0.01% this is the emission norm says right apart from sulfur we have presence of lead right so uh, in order to increase the octane number of the uh, gasoline this uh, lead is added so that we call it as a tetra ethyl lead okay so lead is also a uh, very poisonous uh, uh, substance right so 10 to 50% of the added lead goes out in the exhaust right even though we are adding it to increase octane number uh, because of the addition of the lead uh, to the fuel that is uh, going to leave through the exhaust gas right and other uh, lead is going to get deposited in the engine wall right if it is going to get deposited in the engine wall it is good okay because that will prevent the adsorption right which we have discussed in the previous lecture about hydrocarbon about formation of hydrocarbon right and uh, there is going to be a small amount of uh, presence of uh, phosphorus right this is also an an uh, unwanted uh, emission right and if you are these days we also if you see the alternate uh, fuels we started using alcohol also as fuel right so the major emission from alcohol is this uh, aldehyde okay this causes eye irritations so these are some of the other emissions right 